Well, hi guys, welcome to this Money Control live stream. You're watching Morning Trade with me, Nandita Khemka. Wednesday morning, cues coming out of global markets are fairly mixed. Uh, Wall Street ended uh, mixed overnight. Gift Nifty hinting at a, a muted start uh, with a negative bias after yesterday's crash. We'll have to see whether or not we manage to defend that 21,000 mark on the downside or not. And even if you look at the uh, Nifty Bank Index, 45,000, you know, it's uh, been holding on to that level uh, by the skin of its teeth. Uh, whether or not we manage to sustain these levels, uh, you know, we'll have to see. And of course, we'll be posing that question to our technical expert who will be joining in on the show. Plus, we'll also be considering all your stock-related queries. So if you have any queries, keep them coming uh, in on our live YouTube feed. We'll try and take them up with our experts. But of course, before we move any further, let's take a look at the top headlines at this hour. Wall Street ends mixed with S&P 500 and Nasdaq gaining while the Dow slipping on weak earnings. Nasdaq futures, meanwhile, rise after Netflix reports a jump in subscribers. Uh, meanwhile, Asian markets uh, open mixed uh, while the gift nifty is suggesting a higher start for the, in fact, a muted start for the Indian market. The US dollar hits a six-week high on declining expectations of a rate cut in March. Gold edges higher while crude remains range-bound around that $80 a barrel mark. Axis Bank reports an operationally weak third quarter, but deposit growth of over 5% surpasses private banking peers. Net profit, however, is in line with estimates. And Bajaj Auto and TVS Motor are expected to post a strong set of third quarter numbers. Operational performance will be key metric to track for Tata Steel, while Tech Mahindra is expected to see revenue decline for the third straight quarter. Well, uh, we are first joined in by our uh, technical expert for today, Himin Kapadia, who is the Senior VP Institutional Equity of KR Ch uh, Choksi Securities, joining in this morning. Uh, great to have you on the show, Himin. But, you know, if you look at the markets, no, no great news coming in from there. You know, we saw second time in a week's time that we saw such a big sell-off coming in on the markets. And now 21,000 mark, you know, whether or not we manage to defend that level or not would be crucial, right? So, uh, on the downside... Uh, what is the kind of support level we should be working with uh, for the next couple of sessions? A very good morning to you, Nandita. Thank you for having me on the show. Sorry, the pleasure. Uh, like you said, we've had this uh, second time almost within a week. But uh, we've had an unfettered run from, uh, you know, Nandita, from almost 18,800. So, frankly speaking, we've had a scintillating move somewhere the laws of gravity had to catch up and we finally done that now having said that uh, there's a bearish gap formed a few um, last week which hasn't been covered up which is not a good sign technically we given a downward bar reversal yesterday which is a, once again not a good sign having said that i believe we'll remain within yesterday's range uh like you said twenty one thousand being protected for some part of the day today yes but if it's not then Nandita, the next uh, levels on the downside, uh, there's this uh, congestion area around 21,038 and there is support coming in at 20,769. So things are not looking very copacetic. We look as if we are under pressure and the VIX at 14.85, Nandita, frankly speaking, just sort of reiterates and confirms that, that we walked into a correction. I wouldn't say this is a reversal, Nandita. But yeah, correction, yes. And uh, hopefully it'll play out a bit. This gets slightly exacerbated because we have a truncated week. Monday, Friday, holiday, plus we have an expiry, monthly expiry. Uh, we have a vote on account. Okay, I don't think vote on account is going to matter much. But in the sense, no major decisions. But the way I see it, everything has taken a stall. FII is selling. So I guess markets are taking a breather. And if it comes down further, which is a possibility. Huh. Sorry, resistance on the upside comes in 21.5, 21.680, and 21,800. So if this has, if if you know, sort of balance has to be restored, and we expect to parity, 21,800 needs to be taken out and sustained above. Nandita. All right, that's the view then. Uh, but uh, you know, talking about the Nifty Bank Index, uh, I mean, things not looking hunky dory there as well. And the Nifty PSU Bank Index also shed quite a bit yesterday, right? A four percent kind of a kind of a cut coming in. Uh, so, you know, if you look at the lives of SBI, how should one really be approaching that stock? How, how the charts stacked up right now? 
we have a lot of queries coming in on the banking stocks uh, you know uh, not really surprising given the kind of bashing that uh, you know the banking index itself has seen ever since hdfc bank reported numbers so particularly for uh, an sbi we have a query coming in on that uh, on that stock so i thought might as well address it uh, entry levels for sbi should one actually look at entering uh, these uh, large cap stocks now thing uh I'll just digress just a wee bit. And the the bank Nifty is already being corrected for five weeks. So frankly speaking, it's walked into a correction even before the Nifty had. So there was some weakness which you very rightly pointed out, and that's and that has taken the correction deeper. Having said that, uh, this bank results came in yesterday. Straight, uh, ICICI Bank came in and the big biggie, State Bank. I believe, if I remember correctly, results on the third of February. So I would abhor to second guess the results, Nandita, because good results mean an ORAC, OFSS, Oracle Finance hitting a thirty percent move. A bad, not a bad, but a wobbly result means HDFC Bank gets decimated. So I wouldn't like to second guess the results as far as State Bank is concerned. But the stock has come up from six sixty to six hundred. From whatever little we've seen, Central Bank and otherwise. We've seen PSU banks report better numbers. Support comes in at five ninety five. So I, it's not like catching a falling knife, but currently there's a very distinct negative overhang as far as the SBI is concerned. So one, I would say avoid FNO positions. But if if you do like the stock fundamentally and you wouldn't want to participate, one can buy one third or uh, one can buy one third uh, around five ninety five. Add more at five seventy five because, frankly speaking, we've been here for. Almost one and a half years, Nandita. So, and it has recently posted a fresh all-time high. So, technically things aren't looking too bad. But yes, there has been distinct weakness, which might not go away in the future. All right, that's the view then on SBI. Uh, you know, uh, one shouldn't obviously be uh, second-guessing the numbers, given the fact that reactions have been uh, uh, quite. Uh, uh, you know, pronounced, so to say. But hold that thought, Hemin. We'll come back and talk about other stocks as well. Uh, let me also bring on board Kunal Shah of Carnelian Capital. This, uh, thanks a lot, Kunal, for joining in. I also want to extend uh, this conversation on the banking pack. Right, ever since HDFC Bank has come in, it has been a rough ride for the Nifty Bank Index. And uh, you know, now we have. Uh, uh, all the uh, key numbers from the private banking lot, uh, you know, that have come in, you know, ICICI Bank, uh, you know, kind of came in as a comfort at a time when uh, HDFC Bank really spooked the street, right? And Axis Bank yesterday reported, uh, you know, best, uh, better than peers uh, deposit growth. So uh, it's established that, you know, uh, it's not a systemic issue. It's a bank specific issue when it comes to HDFC Bank. But looking at ICICI Bank, uh, particularly, uh, do you think that has uh, capacity, or uh, uh, you know, uh, that has that could be called the next uh, HDFC bank? Given the fact that it is uh, at a premium to HDFC Bank, I think for the first time in years, fifteen years, so to say. Good morning, Narida. In the first place, to have me on the show. Uh, well, uh, I would not say that ICICI Bank is the next HDFC bank or something of that sort. Uh, but yes, the, there has been a large merger which has happened for HDFC Bank. And we all know there is a large deposit uh, basically which has to be garnered by HDFC Bank, which will not only be a challenge for HDFC Bank, but will also be a challenge uh, uh, for other banks because the cost of funds uh, will be under pressure for a lot of other banks as well that we are seeing in the names getting compressed and the cost of funds getting uh, inched up for all the private banks uh, so far. Even for ICICI Bank, we saw that the cost of funds was a little marginally higher, but uh, however, the other parameters were much, much better. So limited point uh, in the making is that, yes, uh, since SDFC Bank is facing issues uh, pertaining to the uh, deposit growth, pertaining to ROA and ROEs, uh, you know, to have a commanding, uh, to, uh, to command a premium multiple. ICICI Bank, when delivering same kind of growth, uh, better operating parameters, 
like ROA and ROEs, uh, in our sense, should continue to kind of uh, command uh, uh, a premium uh, multiple for some time to go at least uh, till the time. Uh, SDFC Bank is sorted with its uh, merger related issues that have cropped up uh, largely on the liability side, largely on the ROA and ROE side. Right. Uh, are you know, talking about uh, stocks like Indus in Bank now, you know, saw 6% kind of a downtick yesterday. Uh, it, it's largely believed to be an FII led sell off. So, you know, if FIIs have high exposure to the likes of Indus in Bank and HDFC Bank, right, and these are the stocks. Uh, that were hammered out of shape yesterday. Uh, do you think this FII-led sell-off, uh, you know, is uh, is here to stay, given the fact that uh, you know there are uh, talks or chatter in the market that you know FPIs are selling in a bid to meet with SEBI's uh, compliance norms that uh, you know the deadline for which is the first of Feb, right? So, uh, are these talks more uh, vulnerable to sell-off uh, in the coming days, given the fact that HDFC Bank's weak performance, you know, uh, could be largely, uh, you know, could largely be digested by now? So, do you think this is a new leg of sell-off that we are seeing here? Uh, historically, Nandita, you know, we have always seen that whenever uh, there is uh, pressure on the markets or whenever there is anything negative uh, flows or anything, since banks, which forms a large part of the index and are generally over by large FIIs or for that matter, the whole of the FIIs is the first one to see uh, the pressure and also the other way around when generally markets are very bullish. So yes, uh, because of this reason also, uh, banks will always be the first one to bear the brunt uh, uh, right in that sense. Again, coming back to specific FII holdings, I still would say uh, that even ICICI Bank has uh, overrode. It has been a consensus uh, buy for uh, quite some time. Uh, uh, right, it has not done anything for the last one year, but still has been able to kind of sustain at the levels where it has. So in my sense, yes, uh, fundamentals uh, eventually will kind of uh, play a role. But yes, FII selling as has been observed in the, uh, 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 in the history as well, uh, will always have a, a role to play when it comes to selling and buying both ways. Hmm. Right, that was about the banking index, but uh, you know, of course, uh, uh, Bajaj Auto will be reporting its numbers today. Of course, it's the premiumization uh, that would, uh, or premium bikes, uh, you know, that would drive growth for the automaker. But uh, uh, you know, there have been concerns over valuation. CLSA has, you know, recently downgraded the stock. Uh, you know, a, what are your expectations uh, this time around from the third quarter and? Uh, do you think this is the best poised stock in the two-wheeler space now or do you think Hero Moto looks better given the fact that it has, you know, recently launched, uh, you know, new versions of its own bikes and, you know, uh, even its Hero Harley variant is doing pretty well? Uh, so, we saw the volume numbers for this uh, uh, auto stocks coming by in their quarterly update, right? So, even for Bajaj Auto, the volume numbers were pretty impressive on a year-on-year -year basis. Uh, the only thing is basically on the export side, the mix is a little inferior. Uh, you know, uh, there have been two wheelers, but not three wheelers, which are better high margin products. And uh, there have been price hikes. So average selling price should see a little bit of uptick. So revenue growth should be OK. Uh, but margins is something which would be a key monitorable. Coming to the valuations, uh, when there is growth, basically there will always be a little extension on the mean reversion kind of uh, margin. So that is always a relative to how the growth is kind of playing out. Uh, coming to the best uh, placed uh, stock in the auto segment, I do believe that uh, the likes of Pajaj TVS and Hero, more of a rural cyclical play, uh, are well placed. But Aishar is also something which will see a little bit of challenge. But in the long term, since there is no EV risk and exports are something which have been a very big opportunity market, uh, should also be kind of uh, uh, do well over a, a medium to short term, a medium to long term point of view. <laughs> All right, that was about Bajaj Auto. But, you know, since there is uh, some bit of news on TCS, I want to get in your thoughts on, uh, you know, uh, of course, how things will pan out in the next quarter, given the fact that Oxford University has ended its partnership with uh, TCS, citing technical problems, right? Uh, UK is a key market for, uh, you know, one of the key markets for TCS. And, uh, you know, at a time when the street believes that the worst on the revenue front may be over for some of these large cap IT giants, which of course sparked a very good rally on some of these stocks. Do you think this comes as uh, an additional concern and uh, would have a significant impact in the uh, coming quarter? 
Now, that to be very specific, I'll have to kind of uh, see to this X4 uh, event. But generally, I do believe uh, that uh, wherever uh, large IT cap stocks have uh, got a little bit of comfort, uh, as you rightly mentioned, that revenue growth uh, is kind of coming back and margins are also kind of uh, ticking back. So they should generally, with the interest rate environment improving in the US, should do good over a period of two, three years. And specifically, large cap stocks where valuations still in certain pockets are reasonable uh, in comparison to a lot of mid cap stocks. All right, uh, that's the view then. We'll leave it uh, there. Uh, you know, Kunal, we are kind of running out of time. But, uh, you know, thanks a lot for taking our time and sharing your thoughts with us. You know, it's always uh, such a pleasure chatting with you. Same here. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Well, with that, let's go back to uh, Himen, who's been waiting by quite patiently. Himen, I want to get in your thoughts on a PD light. Uh, uh, stock of the day for me, the numbers came out yesterday, you know, good numbers. The profit has spiked 66% on a YOI basis and the operating numbers have been pretty healthy. Uh, the stock hasn't, uh, you know, been doing all that well. We've seen uh, the stock shed somewhere around, uh, you know, 4 to 5% on, on a six-month basis. Even yesterday, the stock was down 5.5%. You know, uh, on the charts, are there any signs of uh, a reversal? Uh, because, you know, it is coming off its 52-week lows. But uh, trend-wise, where is it headed Headed right now? Firstly, Nandita, we are in a 30-year up move. So, uh, I think the, okay, it's been a significant uh, decline yesterday. But remember this, we are in the midst of a 30-year uptrend. So, frankly speaking, uh, some of these moves might seem seem like random noise if you look at it right from the way it is moved since 1994. Having said that, uh, we've been, uh, I wouldn't say corrective, but another we've been range bound since May uh, 2021. This is 2024, so it's been almost three years. Okay, the range is rather large. It's between 1989 on the downside and 2800 on the upside. The only exception was it went to hit an all-time high of 2918 in September 22. It's not counted because it didn't close anywhere close to the high. So 1989 and 2800 and we've been here for almost quarter to three years. So frankly speaking, I don't think things change much. Yes, if it has to go up, we need a monthly closing about 2800, which hasn't happened in listed history. Despite one, two, three, four, five, six or seven attempts so if it has to go up we need a closing about 2800 having said that 2300 1918 strong support so i believe it's going to remain in range it's a rather large range i know it's almost it's a 30 percent 35 percent range but that's how it's going to be unless there is a decisive break but keeping uh uh, uh at the back of the mind the 30 year up move nandita so some consolidation like this from a longer term point of view I believe as well. Only a monthly close below 1989 would put this 30 year uptrend in jeopardy for the first time. So I'd say, yes, bias corrective, but uh, I don't think it's the end of the world. All right. Uh, the, you know, uh, upward momentum, of course, could continue unless that uh, key level of 1989 is broken on the downside. But let's talk about uh, some of the rail stocks now. You know, after the high fly, you know, the high flyers have taken a breather, rather to say uh, to say the least. Yesterday, some of these stocks saw a double-digit kind of a downtick, right? But would you say that the momentum is intact on the charts, and you know, this, uh, you know, these kind of one-off dips should be utilized to get into these stocks, the likes of, uh, uh, you know, Ircon, IRFC, you know, IRCTC, some of these names. Yes, but I wait a bit. I think for the time being, the railway stocks thought they were airline stocks and they were flying high. Uh, everything is hunky-dory, but uh, like you said, the quantum of the rise has been slightly discon disconcerting. Speed and the quantum. So it's been major move. And from whatever you read and understand the government's focus, I believe these uh, defense and PSU and uh, the railway stocks are going to shine. I think we've had the minister on record say 2027 we'll be getting a ticket on demand. So infrastructure spend, this is going to grow. But uh, in the extreme near term, I'm not sure if whatever we're seeing is completely justified from a technical point of view though. So coming back to your main question, yes, I believe that the momentum is there. We've just, uh, day before, posted a fresh all-time high. 
Nandita. So that has, doesn't hasn't changed dramatically, but impossible to catch tops and bottom. But I would suggest that if you are going to uh, go long, you can split it into four pieces, and on declines you can you can start nibbling with the first one fourth of, because currently everything is fine. But looking at the way it's moved, if I'm not saying suggesting that we are, if we were on the verge of a correction of a greater degree. we might just see a four to six month uh, consolidation and that would mean a puncture in the momentum so i'd say just be mildly cautious and don't put all your eggs in one basket at the same time all right that's the view and we had a query on ircon coming in from kamal hasan hope that answers your query but uh, you know would you uh, be looking at the charts of a recently listed stock uh, you know irada we have quite a few qu- queries coming in on this particular stock i know uh, you know uh, there is a lack of historical data here but uh, since the time it is listed uh, going by the trends would you uh, advise uh, uh, you know traders to look at this particular stock now trilok wants to know your thoughts both short and long term on this particular stock okay i think you already said it but i'll just reiterate caveat mtor limited data so that uh, sort of sort of strangles the technical view but with whatever limited data that we have the stock has been posting progressively higher tops and bottoms and data it's a very constructive move we formed a rounding bottom consolidated every every up move has been followed by a nice time and a price retracement so like i said constructive move a uh, positive of data at repeat but we are at 154 on declines with this data it still looks good i believe we are heading towards 180 heading towards 180 i hope that answers your query trilok uh the next question is coming in from saurabh gupta wants to know your thoughts on a petronet lng and whether he wants to know whether it's a good time to exit uh i'm sure he must be in profits given the fact that you know yesterday in a weak market the stock managed to hold out 5 and 1/2% kind of an up move and on a one month basis it has gained a good 21% right so time to take uh, profit uh, if not uh, fully at least partial profits makes sense nandita because if you look at the charts uh, it hasn't done much uh, nifty bank nifty sector stocks have have gone berserk this stock has done nothing in the last 7 years so in fact the high posted of 298 uh, somewhere in uh, uh, october september 19 nandita we uh, haven't even been close to that in one of the most scintillating bull runs we've had so frankly speaking after 7 years of uh, underperformance i'm not sure when we are going to see some positive price action come in so yes uh, i think little bit of profit booking uh, It isn't a bad idea. I'll just mention a couple of levels: two sixty, two seventy five, two ninety eight. Resistance supported two thirty six. If and when we are, so we would actually take out the all time high. If that happens, I mean, after seven years of frankly speaking hatching eggs, I think it might surprise very strongly on the upside. So I'd say a little bit of profit booking. Hold on to the rest. All right, uh, that's the view. Hope that answers your query. We have a query coming in from Jiffin. Wants to understand your thoughts on on an ease uh, easy trip. uh you know stock has not really been doing all that well over the last five uh, uh, sessions you know in tandem with the market really uh you know what are your thoughts given the government's uh, you know tourism boost especially uh, you know with respect to ayodhya do you think uh, it makes sense to buy some of these stocks on dips aviation hotels and you know particularly ease my trip because that i don't track the stock but if i look at lemon tree or hmm. leela and indian hotels and uh, chalet and uh many of the hotels are in very clear well established uptrend so sector per se is doing quite well on technical parameters right uh, uh just a couple of more queries krk rao wants to know your thoughts on omcs of course crude is back around that 80 dollar per barrel mark right so uh some bit of uh, pressure do you do you envisage some pressure on the charts or do you think uh, you know fairly up uh, you know the momentum would be on the upside here on no i think some pressure uh, is possible nandita because uh, the price action seems to suggest a small breather now like bpcl bpcl has given a huge downward bar reversal volumes are higher highest in the last three days mechanical indicators are given a crossover sell some of them are showing negative divergence cutting out the jargon it looks heavy stretched and overbought it's right for a correction 
up till now the market has been ignoring many of these technical negatives but this time around you know it's not crying wool but this time around it would actually work so if we close above 485 nothing matters but if we close below 460 i think we're going to get a deeper correction all right uh, that's the view i hope that answers your query uh you know um Last one, last talk that I want to really, uh, you know, bring your attention to is United Spirits. Numbers are pretty good. Beat estimates, profit jumped over 60%, uh, healthy operating margins as well. Uh, you know, uh, if you look at the stock, uh, you w wouldn't really say it's been in high spirits, given the fact that, you know, hasn't really done much, been sideways on the charts. Uh, so going forward, uh, do you expect some bit of... Uh, uh, you know, Fizz coming back to the stock now that the earnings, uh, you know, the quarterly earnings are out of the way? Yes, uh, uh, valid point, very much possible. Uh, we've, like you said, it hasn't been a bubbly, so to speak. Not fair to compare Sula, but it hasn't been that bubbly. But yes, uh, it's been dredging along uh, high tops, high bottoms. We've just recently, Nandita, just uh, last week, we I believe we posted a fresh all time high. So United Spirits has been a slow mover, LB. But as long as we're above 1,020, I believe positive price action should follow. So further upside, I don't think it's a runaway move, but further upside, distinct possibility. All right, further upside, distinct possibility on the charts of United Spirits. Well, uh, with that, we've come to the end of the query segment. Uh, but Himen, uh, before I let you go, what would you be recommending for our viewers this morning? Frankly speaking, it's a veritable minefield, Nandita, where the mm. markets have been going on and we have a holiday expiry. So, But uh, a buy on Astral, I believe it's an intraday buy, oversold. Uh, the charts on the half an hour uh, time frame uh, look to look to be turning some positive price action and upward key reversal. So one can buy Astral at 1772, stop loss 1762, target 1792. It's just an intraday buy call. And the other stock is uh, HBCL. It's a positional sell because I believe that uh, time being uh, there is being a break in momentum. So, but it's a conditional sell call because HBCL moved from 475 to 437 yesterday. So it's a conditional sell call at 460, stop loss 475, target 430. It's a positional sell call now. All right, positional sell call on HPCL as well as a, a buy call on Astral Pipes, right? With that, uh, Himen, uh, as usual, great chatting this morning Thanks. and, uh, you know, understanding your thoughts on various talks. And of course, thanks a lot for uh, taking, out, taking out time and addressing all of your queries as well. Look forward to touching base with you soon sometime. Well, with that, we've come to the end of this edition of Morning Trade. Uh, uh, thanks a lot for tuning in from me and the entire team. But, of course, stay tuned because coming up next is opening bell.